I'm happy to join Congressman Jan Schakowsky with the invitation of Mayor Elizabeth Tisdall here on Gray Street in Evanston. Dolores, uh, Dolores Holmes is here, uh, local alderman as well as alderman Ann Ring and others. I'm sure I'm missing a few. I apologize. What we saw today with this visit to this home is what happens to a neighborhood that's hit with foreclosures. This isn't just your neighbor's problem. It's all of our problems. As these homes are foreclosed, many of them become vacant. They became, become sources of drug activity, criminal activity. They drag down the value of every property, not just in the neighborhood, but in the community that surrounds us. That's why this is an issue we cannot ignore. Whether you're on the southwest side of Chicago, out in Kane County, or right here in Evanston, foreclosures are growing in number. The estimate this morning is that in a few years, one half of all people with mortgages in America will be underwater. What that means is the value of their home will be less than the principal that they owe. We have to deal with this and deal with it aggressively. First, let me give um, a bouquet and hats off uh, to Mayor Tisdall, who saw an opportunity in a national competition for neighborhood stabilization funds available in Washington. She rolled up her sleeves, brought her team together, put in a competitive competition, a competitive application, then came out to Washington to sell it, and she was successful for the city of Evanston. $18 million will be invested back in this community to make sure that this street changes for the better so that families can stay here and feel safe, property values can get back to normal and start to increase, and people will have part of the American dream that we all value. But as this economy gets better, we cannot overlook the fact that this foreclosure crisis still threatens us. What we've done in Washington is good, but not good enough. We have to do more. And let me call on the banks. The banks who are willing to see these houses stand vacant for years, literally for years, instead of working with those who are in it to try to keep them in their homes or doing something positive with them after they're foreclosed. That is a scandal, and it's one that should be reported, and it's one that we need to change. Congressman Schakowsky. Thank you, Senator. Jan Schakowsky, I represent this district. I've lived in Evanston for over 30 years, and the reason that people come to this community in large part is about the diversity of the community. And that's what's threatened right now. We see that in neighborhoods like this that have been thriving for many years are in incredible difficulty right now. Blocks where there are many homes that are in foreclosure. And when that happens, all kinds of other bad things happen. There's an increase in, in crime. There is an increase in, 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 in drugs. There's been a, a shooting on this block. And people who have lived here for years are seeing the whole neighborhood deteriorate. Thank goodness Evanston had the um, talent and the foresight to apply for this neighborhood stabilization grant because it can change the character not only of Gray Street and the, uh, the west side of Evanston, but really stabilize our whole city. And so I also want to take my hat off to the, the great work that they did to write a, a, a wonderful grant to make our community stronger, keep people here who want to stay here, and to uh, save the, the homes that are in foreclosure. And absolutely, the banks should be able to re modify the, the loans so people that there are plenty of people who are working who, if they could just get a, a, a mortgage that matches the value, the decline value of their home, could stay right here in, in this community. So between the, the, the city of Evanston and hopefully some things that we can get in cooperation with the banks, we can turn this whole city around. Thank you. I'd like to thank Congresswoman Schakowsky and Senator Durbin for being the world's greatest congresswoman and the world's <laughs> greatest senator. Uh, with their help and with the work of Alderman Rainey, Alderman Jean-Baptiste, Alderman Holmes, uh, we are going to change the second, the fifth, and the eighth ward. And they are going to be wards that people fight to come to. They are going to represent the American dream, and it is going to happen very soon, thanks to the 18150000 that we received. The stimulus package works. It's going to work here on Gray, and it's going to work in the other wards that I named. And all of those wards are going to be ones that people fight to come to. Thank you.
Well, we worked so hard. Well, we're just really excited to be able to uh, receive the funds and to be able to make a change in the neighborhood. We are going to do it block by block. We've been working for the last four years trying to change our neighborhood to make it um, livable in terms of being the most livable co uh, community in America, and that's what we're going to make evidence. So we're just excited to get started. We just want the money to come so we can start building. Good. Questions? 18 million and Evanston will handle how many homes? How does that translate? Uh, it's, it's, uh, there's two census tracts that it will affect. And I think the proposal originally, I think, was 100 homes. I'm looking for right. staff. I, mean, there's 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 right woman. Yeah. I believe it's I, I believe it's 100 homes. Yeah, I don't want to let them write it. Yeah. Um, I'm Sarah Flax, uh, working for the city of Evanston. Um, the, our proposal uh, calls for the purchase and rehabilitation of 100 housing units uh, between the two uh, areas addressed and a redevelopment project in addition of up to 98 different housing units. And is there a business piece? Um, this is all housing specifically, but there are other efforts in the city that address business, uh, neighborhood business districts that are affected by this area, approximately so the plan, the plan calls for outright purchase, and then what, what accommodation is made for the homeowner there now? These are, the requirement of the grant is that the properties be foreclosed or abandoned. In other words, they are not currently occupied. Uh, so what we are able then to do is rehabilitate the housing as affordable housing and uh, get people back into that housing, people who may have been displaced already by the housing crisis, get them back into their neighborhoods. Sarah, the original grant request was for something like $40 million, and we basically got a little less than half of that money. Um, which, what's going to be the priority now for what part of the program to actually carry out with the reduced amount of funds? The requirement of the grant is that the foreclosed and abandoned housing be addressed first. So the 100 units must be taken care of and we will do that. Um, and we are working right now on the redevelopment plan to uh, resize or push it over a longer period of time to be able to accomplish the full purpose of the grant. Senator Durbin, do you think Chicago might get some funds to do it something did. like that? Chicago oh, did. That's, that's yeah. 98 million. <laughs> 98. But, you know, <laughs> How is it going to help? We're talking about, you know, you, you oh, drive through the south side and it oh, looks like terrible. a whole city. It's so terrible. You think and, you know, they're going to, this is going to have an impact, 18 million, uh, 150,000. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's going to have an impact here in Evanston. Uh, but it, and it, certainly the mayor will find ways to use the money uh, in Chicago to have an impact on some neighborhoods. But let's step back and be honest about it. This overall is a national challenge. This foreclosure crisis is not close to being dealt with. We now have about 4% of the people facing foreclosure that we've been able to get modification. 4%! You know, that is absolutely unacceptable. At some point, these banks that spend a fortune on advertising about how much they care about the people who bank there have to care about the communities where these foreclosed homes sit and disintegrate. I mean, it is a reality that has to be faced by these banks first. Uh, I won't get into some of the legislative solutions which they have fought me on. Uh, which Jan has supported, like in bankruptcy court and such, uh, the banking industry does not want to acknowledge the reality of what's happening in neighborhoods just like this. Uh, we have to deal with it from a government viewpoint with taxpayers' money because they're not facing the reality. I thought the president kind of gave them a mandate to, hey, get your act together and modify these loans. The president has called them in for urging, jawboning, everything he can think of. Frankly, I think that that time has passed. I think if we were appealing to their uh, good sense, good nature, it hasn't worked, and it hasn't worked enough. Chicago. Some banks some banks have, but very few. Well, can I say something about banks? Because we have to distinguish between many of the community banks, the neighborhood banks that have um, now access to about $30 billion um, of money from the federal government, because those are the ones that are actually lending in communities. The uh, uh, Secretary Geithner just announced this week that community development financial institutions will also, who have a mandate to help communities like this, uh, neighborhoods like this, will be able to have access to the, the money. But the, uh, the, the biggest institutions that have gotten more than a little help from the, uh, the, the federal government have got to do better. 
to make sure that our communities stay vital. What do you think of the movement to move uh, money from you know the large banks to community banks? I support it. And the idea, of course, is to take the TARP money, hundreds of billions sent to the biggest banks and to Wall Street, now being paid back with interest, and to take that money and turn it into loans uh, for small businesses, credit that they need through community banks, as Congressman Schakowsky said. Uh, I completely support that. Uh, and let me tell you, uh, those who say, well, why don't you use it to reduce the deficit, ignore the obvious. Unless we get this recession under control and the unemployment rate coming down, this deficit will get even worse. We have got to come to the rescue to create good paying jobs, good paying jobs right here in America that can't be shipped overseas, rehabbing some of these homes, getting people into these homes to live, you know, that's going to stabilize these communities and start us back uh, out of this recession. In, in response to your question, I announced two weeks, two weeks ago, I admitted that I was ending my abusive relationship and breaking up with my too-big-to-fail bank. And so I have left <laughs> Bank of America and I have gone to a neighborhood bank in Rogers Park where I grew up and where my parents bank, the Devon Bank. And of course my relationship with Bank of America was innocent enough because I had a neighborhood bank that was purchased and purchased and purchased all this consolidation into these into these huge uh, banks. But, uh, you know, I get interest on my checking account. I got a clock and a very nice pen set. <laughs> and I'm very happy at my neighborhood bank. And I think it ought to be, uh, it, it could be a movement where, where people uh, decide to help the banks that have been helping their communities. Oh, oh and wait, you'll see. As you guys, you'll see so many. All up on this side of the street, I called at least Five or six. Do, you, do you have any idea which banks are involved in these foreclosures? Oh, I don't know. Well, Jim probably has. Deutsche Bank sticks in my Deutsche mind. Bank. You know, I want to tell you something. I went down to Market Point, southwest part of Chicago, near Midway Airport, and I said to them, you ought to make signs and say, another foreclosure brought to you by Blankety right. Bank. Mm -hmm. And you ought to put them, because they spend a fortune on advertising, seeing what great banks they are. Yeah. And you ought to just go, let's see, Deutsche Bank. Deutsche Bank. Who would have guessed Deutsche Bank? Yeah. Well, that's, you get down to Market Park and you say Deutsche Bank. I'm not saying they're the only ones, but who would have guessed Deutsche Bank, you know? And I'm saying they ought to get the publicity of people knowing who's responsible for these foreclosures because they can do something about it. Mm -hmm. Now, some of these folks will lose jobs. There's not much you can do. But some of these other folks, when the value goes down, they get underwater, you know, the bank's got to be honest. We need to renegotiate this mortgage based right. on... Mrs. Cromer works. She took off work today. So oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's the only way that we're going to get these houses. The banks to give up these houses or to let people stay in them. Do you want to sell this house? I have to because my, my, my dad left a will that both houses, you know, there's three of us. Everybody gets a third. It's in probate. And from what I understand, the state of Illinois only allows 18 months to clean out your probation. So the, my dad's lawyer that we had, he just went to court recently and asked the judge for an extension. So I have an order from the judge saying that I need to, I'm the executor, I need to clear out this, close out this probation by March 17, 2011. And the fact that I had that house, we had that house on sale before my dad died. And because the neighborhood was changing, we had many people looking, but you know you can go on the internet, and then on the news things were happening that they were reading, and we got no offers. So I had to rent it in order to pay the taxes. The sure. real estate taxes are horrible. Yes. And even though I'm six, over 65, there's a, I can't do the freeze because I'm still working and I don't qualify for that. And upstairs, and it's vacant. She can't rent that because she can't find the tenants. No, people aren't interested. Thank you for letting us come and join your home.